Income tax 2023-2024. Unemployment compensation tax software example. Get ready and some coffee because we need to save some money for vacation with the help of income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our Form 1040 example problem using LACERT tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to tax software, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to forms, schedules, instructions at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Starting at our normal starting point, our taxpayer, Adam, tax man, just trying to avoid a dang tax man, living in 90210 Beverly Hills, single filer. We have no dependents to start off with. Our starting point, as usual, the nice round 100,000 W-2 income. We've got the 13,850 standard deduction, 86,150 taxable income. We can mirror that in the income tax formula of Excel, 100,000 13,850, 86,150. The tax then calculated by LACERT 14,266, page two of LACERT or tax software 14,266. All right, let's go back to page one and we're going to imagine there was some unemployment income. So typically from a data input standpoint, it's pretty straightforward because you will usually get a form something like this from the state which will have that 1099G for it. And we'll have something like, it'll be the unemployment compensation. And then there may or may not be withholdings from for, for that. And so the data input is fairly straightforward. What is usually more complex is when people uh, are going from job to job and receiving unemployment, should they take withholdings might be a question that comes up from a planning standpoint and how much should they withhold or should they make estimated payments how much of the estimated payments should they make let's first just see where the data input is and then we'll touch on pot some of those more complex questions that you might run across so we can find this we can go and say all right if i add this is where's this going to be this is going to be down here where we see the line eight additional income from schedule one, it's going to feed into there and that's going to come from the schedule one. So if I go into the schedule one, we're looking at uh, additional income and we're looking for the unemployment, which is line number seven. So I'm going to go here and then I'm going to try to jump to there from the software. Most software has this capacity to kind of jump to the data input. There's the uh, screen that we're looking for. And I'm going to say this is going to be not a refund. This is the unemployment compensation. Let's say it was 10,000 of unemployment compensation. So we're going back on over to the forms. There's the 10,000 being populated on the schedule one part one scrolling down. It is summing up to the 10,000 on the bottom line that pulling over to the form 1040. So within the form 1040, we still had our W-2 income, we're saying of 100,000, but now we've got the 10,000 that pulled in from the schedule one to get to 110,000. We can mirror that in our formula over here by saying income. And then we had uh, the unemployment, uh, which is on schedule one. So I can go into the schedule one and then I'll just add another line here. Let's just add one line, unemployment, employ it meant compensation. We're probably only gonna have one line item. So I'll just make that like black and white right there. Dut, dut, or blue and bordered, I should say. Uh, well, no, let's make it black and white. I was right the first time. And then I'll make this blue and bordered. Border, 
blue and we said it was 10,000. And then my total down here is adding these up. So let's just pull this down to add it up down to there. Check the spelling, review, spell check it. Boom, good spelling. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the first page. There's the 110. We're still at the 13,850, bringing the taxable income to the 86, one, or 96,150. There's the 96,150, page two, calculated the tax now at 16,482. So I'm going to say, all right, this is going to be 16,482. So there we have it. And so that looks good. Okay, so then, so that's that. Pretty straightforward on the data input. Uh, people might have questions about, you know, in prior years that they, they didn't have to include unemployment compensation because of the whole COVID thing. But now we're basically back to normal. The unfortunate thing about the the unemployment is people are often not doing withholdings on it. So if they have a whole year of like unemployment compensation or, or like six months or whatever, it's gonna it's going to be included in income and they might not have the tax withholdings. So it's so sometimes it's kind of a scary situation from the data input side because you're thinking, oh no, this is gonna end up in a situation where they where they're gonna owe tax because they didn't do any withholdings on it. As far as the estimated tax, they could make withholdings if I go back on over and let's say that in the withholdings line, they withheld 2000, then of course that would pull over in a similar fashion as the W2 withholdings. So now we've got the 10,000 here, page two, calculating the tax 16,482. And now I have 2000 that was withheld so that the uh, tax, the, the uh, amount owed is now 15,151 plus a, a, a penalty that's including the penalty here. So the withholdings are there as well. So when people are trying to determine how much tax they're going to owe, it gets a little bit complex because note that let's go back to the original starting point. I'm going to go back on over here and say, let's remove this bit and, and let's go back over and say, we're back at the 100,000 and the 13,850. So let's see that over here and remove it. So I'm going to go to and remove this and then back on over. And so 86,150. So 86,150, page two at 14,266. So we're at 14,266. So notice that that is being taxed at an average rate of 16.6, right? And so we have the marginal rate and the average rate. So when, you, when you're thinking about how that is calculated, meaning uh, when, you, when you make withholdings, you would like your withholdings to be something greater than the 14,266, right? So on the W-2, we probably would have withheld something like 15,000, and that would result in a slight overpayment and a refund. Now, the question is, well, how did we get to this 15,000? Well, on a W-2 income, we would have populated the W-4, the, the w given it to the employer, and then they would have had to make withholdings. How does that W-4 work? Well, it's going to have to annualize the income, and it's going to have to kind of estimate that you're going to make 100,000 at the end of the year, and and then give you, and then, and then it's going to, basically take out of your paycheck the average rate uh which 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 we determined to be about 16.6 uh percent right so it could take out an even amount of pay over the year but we know that that the actual tax is calculated on this progressive uh tax system at multiple different tax rates so what does that mean it means it means if i pull out the trustee calculator here like if I if I took 100,000 and we said we got paid monthly divided by 12, then we would be making 8333, three, three, you know, each each month and we'd have to say okay, then I'm just going to multiply that times the average tax rate, which is going to be the 0.166 about to get my withholdings which will be even uh, over over the year so so I can basically budget and and whatnot. However, if I get if I get laid off or something like that, then 
instead of making the 100000 if I get laid off in the middle of the year, I might have only made 50000 Well, what's that going to do? You can see my tax brackets, my top tax bracket is 22%. What if I got laid off in the middle of the year and, and I'm at, I only made 50000 well, it's the middle of the year, so if I withheld 15000 before, you would think 15000 divided by 2, I might have withheld by the middle of the year 7500 right? Because I would have had half the year of uh, the withholdings. If I go back on over, you can see then now I've, I've only earned the 50000 because I was laid off. I'm not looking at the unemployment at this time. I still have the 13850 of the standard deduction 36150 page 2 is now calculating a tax which is only uh, 4121 so you you could see the tax is a lot lower than you might expect because you're you're at lower tax brackets because of the progressive tax system so the the basic idea is that when you do the withholdings or the estimated tax payments you have to try to project what you're going to earn for the entire year. So that means that for the first half of the year, if you were to get laid off and not make the amount that you thought you were going to make, then you're probably over withholding on the first half of the year because you're going to be, have a you're going to have lower tax brackets due to the progressive tax system. So when someone so if you if you were to get laid off in the, in the middle of the year and then get unemployment compensation, the question is, should I withhold on it or not? And and you're going to have to include the unemployment compensation in income, so it will be taxable, but your tax rates are, are going to be kind of messed up because the withholdings that you made for the part of the year that you were working are probably over or too high because they were based on the income that they, you were projected to make if you worked for the entire year. You see, it gets somewhat, me again, all this pl the planning uh, whenever you get into the planning process, the progressive tax rates have a big impact. They actually, it starts to get complicated. So what do you do, what do, you do it in that situation? Should I withhold or not is going to be the question. And, uh, and uh, should I, or should I make estimated tax payments since I'm going to have to include it in income? Well, if you have tax software, you can plug the information into the tax software and say, okay, well, if you only make 50000 and you withheld 7,500, then then you'd be okay. How much how much unemployment are you getting? Let's say we're gonna get another 10,000 of unemployment. So I can say, okay, let's go to the unemployment. Let's jump to it again. Go to do it and say unemployment, jump, jump. And we're gonna say that's gonna be 10,000. And okay, and so then I go back on over. So there's the 10,000, boom. And I can say, okay, now we're up to 60,000. Makes sense, because we had to include the unemployment. And then if I go to page two, we have the 5,466. We still withheld 7,500. So in that case, you can say, okay, well, we're still should be good without withholdings because you probably over withheld for the first half of the year because because of the scenario we talked about that's the kind of calculation that you could do f like you can help people do that uh for pr projection kind of situations uh, although well and then you can also recommend people do that for themselves by going to the irs website irs.gov irs.gov and look at the withholdings estimator and that will help them to basically have software kind of similar to this in essence that will help them to do a projection which will help them to determine if they may need to make estimated tax payments due to the fact that they no longer have withholdings from the w-2 income but now are getting revenue in the form of unemployment compensation they're going to have to pay taxes on and and they'll have to determine how much of the of the of that do they need to pay either in the form of withholdings of the unemployment compensation or in the form of estimated tax payments remembering that the if if you don't pay it and and you have you don't have any payments then you're going to get hit with the tax at the end of the year plus you get hit with the penalties and interest possibly for underpayment because the IRS wants their money during the year you know even if you're unemployed anything that's income they want to get paid as the year 
is progressing is the uh, is the general idea.